In this video, we are going to discuss the various dimensioning features used in engineering drawing. If you like the video, then please subscribe to my channel. Let's start with our first dimensioning feature which is diameter. The diameter symbol precedes all diametral values. Well, if we reverse them then it is not a good practice. Where the diameters of the number of concentric cylindrical features are specified, such diameters should be dimensioned in a longitudinal view if practical. Where the diameter of a spherical feature is specified, the diametral value is preceded by the spherical diameter symbol. The next dimensioning feature we are going to discuss is radii. Each radius value is preceded by the appropriate radius symbol. A radius dimension line uses one narrow head, at the arc end. An arrow head is never used at the radius center. Where the location of the center is important and space permits, a dimension line is drawn from the radius center with the arrow head touching the arc, and the dimension is placed between the arrow head and the center. Where it is inconvenient to place the arrow head between the radius center and the arc, it may be placed outside the arc with a leader. Where the center of a radius is not dimensionally located, the center shall not be indicated. Where a dimension is given to the center of a radius, a small cross is drawn at the center. Extension lines and dimension lines are used to locate the center. Where location of the center is unimportant, the drawing must clearly show that the arc location is controlled by other dimensioned features such as tangent surfaces. Where the center of a radius is outside the drawing or interferes with another view, the radius dimension line may be foreshortened. That portion of the dimension line extending from the arrow head is radial relative to the arc. Where the radius dimension line is foreshortened and the center is located by coordinate dimensions, the dimension line locating the center is also foreshortened. On a 2D orthographic drawing, where a radius is dimensioned in a view that does not show the true shape of the radius, true is added before the radius dimension. This practice is applicable to other foreshortened features as well as radii. Where a spherical surface is dimensioned by a radius, the radius dimension is preceded by the symbol SR. Now let's take a look at chords, arcs, and angles. Chords are represented, as depicted on the screen. When arc is to be represented, it is represented with an arc on top of the arc value as seen on the screen. And for the angle, as you can see the extension lines are placed at an angle. Next, we will discuss rounded ends and slotted holes. Features having rounded ends, including slotted holes, are dimensioned using the following methods. The first way of dimensioning this feature is illustrated on the screen, which shows the two dimensions and indicates the radius. If you have noted, for fully rounded ends, the radii are indicated but not dimensioned. That is because the value of the radius can be calculated based on this dimension. The second way would be, to indicate the two dimension as indicated, and the radius depiction remains the same. And the third way would be to show the overall dimensions as compared to first way, which shows the longitudinal dimension between the centers. For features with partially rounded ends, the radii are dimensioned as shown. Note that, the arc is extended appropriately. Where corners are rounded, dimensions define the edges, and the arcs are tangent, as illustrated. Let's take a look at the outlines consisting of arcs. A curved outline composed of two or more arcs, is dimensioned by giving the radii of all the arcs, and locating the necessary centers with coordinate dimensions. Other radii are located on the basis of their points of tangency. Irregular outlines may be dimensioned as discussed. Circular or non-circular outlines may be dimensioned by the rectangular coordinate or offset method. Coordinates are dimensioned from baselines. Where many coordinates are required to define an outline, the vertical and horizontal coordinate dimensions may be tabulated, as illustrated. Symmetrical outlines may be dimensioned on one side of the center line of symmetry. Such is the case where, Due to the size of the part or space limitations, only part of the outline can be conveniently shown. One half the outline of the symmetrical shape is shown and symmetry is indicated by applying symbols for part symmetry to the center line. The round hole is dimensioned as shown, where multiple features are involved, additional clarification may be required. 
where it is not clear that a hole goes through, the notation through follows a dimension. The depth dimension of a blind hole is the depth of the full diameter from the outer surface of the part. It is shown in the following ways. One way of showing is, in the top view as illustrated, accompanied by the depth symbol. The same depiction can also be shown in the section view of the object. And the third way is to show, the diameter and the depth separately as illustrated, where the depth dimension is not clear, as, from a curved surface, the depth should be dimensioned pictorially. One way of showing this is, by placing the depth dimension of the hole. And the other way would be calculating the depth dimension of the hole from this dimension. Next, we are going to discuss the counterboard holes. Counterboard holes may be specified as shown. It consists of the following information, that is, diameters, depth, radius and counterbore symbol. Where the thickness of the remaining material has significance, this thickness is dimensioned rather than the depth. What this means can be best illustrated in its section view as shown. To make it more illustrated, let's place these respective dimensions in the section view depicting the respective features. For holes having more than one counterbore, where applicable, a fillet radius may be specified, as shown. Again to get a better understanding of what this means, let's place these features to its respective location in section view. Next, we are going to discuss countersunk and counter drilled holes. For countersunk holes, the diameter and included angle of the countersink is specified. As shown, to know what it means, let's move these dimensions to its respective location in the section view of the object. For counter-drilled holes, the diameter and depth of the counter-drill are specified. Specifying the included angle of the counter-drill is optional. The depth dimension is the depth of the full diameter of the counter-drill from the outer surface of the part. When we place these dimensions in its section view, then we get a better illustration of the displayed features. Now we are going to look at, chamfered and countersunk holes on curved surfaces. Where a hole is chamfered or countersunk on a curved surface, the diameter specified on the drawing applies at the minor diameter of the chamfer or countersink, as illustrated on the screen. To get a better idea of this, we can also look at the 3D view of this object. Here, the minor radius equals the shortest distance from center to the edge of the countersink on the actual part. Now, let's take a look at the spot faces. Where the diameter of the spot faced surface is specified, either the depth or the remaining thickness of the material may be specified. If no depth or remaining thickness of the material is specified, the spot face is the minimum depth necessary to clean up the surface to the specified diameter. Where applicable, a fillet radius may be indicated for the spot face. In some cases, such as with a through hole, the notation may be necessary to indicate the surface to be spot faced. A spot face may be specified by note only and need not be shown pictorially. To visualize these dimensions with more clarity, let's move these dimensions to their respective locations for better understanding. The next feature to be discussed is chamfer. Chamfers are dimensioned by various features. Where an angle and a linear dimension are specified, the linear dimension is the distance from the indicated surface of the part to the start of the chamfer, as illustrated. For chamfers specified by note, a note may be used to specify 45 degrees chamfers on perpendicular surfaces. As shown, this method is used only with 45 degrees chamfers, as the linear value applies in either direction. For round holes, where the edge of a round hole is chamfered, the practice of a 45 degrees angle is followed, except where the chamfer diameter requires dimensional control. This type of control may also be applied to the chamfer diameter on a shaft. This same chamfer can also be illustrated by the angle between the edge of the hole and the chamfer. For non-perpendicular intersecting surfaces. Two acceptable methods of dimensioning chamfers for surfaces intersecting at other than right angles are shown on the screen. Now let's take a look at key seats. Key seats are dimensioned by width, depth, location, and if required, length. The depth may be dimensioned from the opposite side of the shaft or hole, as illustrated on the screen. And the last feature to be discussed in this video is newling. Newling is specified in terms of type, 
pitch, and diameter before and after newling. Where control is not required, the diameter after newling is omitted. Where only a portion of a feature requires newling, the location and length of the null shall be specified. As shown on the screen, when we consider newling for press fit, where required to provide a press fit between parts, newling is specified by a note that includes the type of null required, its pitch, the tolerance diameter of the feature before newling, and the minimum acceptable diameter after newling. As depicted on the screen, with this, we come to an end of this video, don't forget to watch my next video on different types of views, used in engineering drawings. So, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon.